Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I'm gonna to show you a really quick, easy upgrade you can do to your Creality Ender 3, your Ender 5, your CR10, uh, that's gonna make it uh, more reliable in the hot end as far as that uh, dreaded tube gap that we all experience one time or another where the Bowden tube separates from the back of the nozzle. Uh, when that happens, it creates a void. That void fills with softened plastic. Uh, that plastic hinders both feeding a filament, which affects your surface quality, and it hinders retractions, which means you're going to get more stringing. Now, this isn't a new upgrade. This is something that a man named Luke Hatfield came up with some time ago. Uh, Luke is one of the most knowledgeable people I know on the Enders uh, and the CR10s. Uh, he's very active on Facebook, and I've linked both his Thingiverse upgrade and uh, one of the Facebook groups that he's active in in the video description. I suggest checking that one out. Um, I put this on two of my machines about six months ago because I wanted to test it, and it's not that I don't trust Luke. Um, as I said, he's one of the most knowledgeable people I know, but before I come to you and with a video and say, do this, I want to have done my due diligence and tested it for the types of things we do, you know, miniatures and terrain, and make sure it's gonna work. And it has worked wonderfully. So I'm doing this video now, I'm gonna walk you through how to do this upgrade. Um, but just a little bit of background on this. What Luke has done is uh, basically come up with a conversion for the hot end uh, which basically makes it like a tr more traditional hot end for a 3D printer. And when I say traditional, what I mean is, and not, before anybody says it, I don't mean an all metal hot end. I'm talking about uh, a standard lower temperature hot end from E3D, for example. Uh, what these do is these have a small uh, liner inside of the hot end in the heat transition area so the filament doesn't melt or soften too soon. Um, the, uh, it's the same material as a Bowden tube, same thing, it's just a small little length of it. Uh, and this is in hot ends that are both designed for direct feed and for Bowden feed. And the advantage is that sleeve can be locked in place against the back of the nozzle and it won't separate to create that gap because it's not under any stress. Now when Creality designed these machines, they eliminated that. What they did was to simplify the design, they used the Bowden food, uh, Sorry, I can't talk. Um, they use the Bowden tube to feed all the way down through the hot into the back of the nozzle. So it's not only acting as the uh, filament feed tube, it's acting as the interior liner for the hot end as well. Well, this is really great from a manufacturing standpoint because it simplifies things. Fewer parts, easier to assemble, and faster to make the machine. The problem is the Bowden tube is under so much stress that during the print process, it gets yanked on. Eventually, it's going to separate from the back of the nozzle and create a gap. As I said, that gap fills with molten plastic and it causes printing problems. By going to an interior sleeve design, you put that sleeve in, it's locked in place by the Bowden tube coupler. No matter how much tugging you do on this Bowden tube, that sleeve is never under any stress, so it's not gonna separate. The other advantage is if you do a nozzle change, now all you have to do after you put the new nozzle in to make sure that the interior sleeve is um, butted up against the back of that nozzle tightly is just tighten your Bowden tube coupler nut just a little bit. So in addition to solving printing problems you may be experiencing, this is gonna make nozzle changes much easier, uh, cleaning clogs easier, and it's just gonna make uh, things a lot more simple for you when doing general maintenance. When you take this Bowden tube out to do maintenance on your hot end, you're not removing the sleeve. You don't have to worry about creating that gap now. So I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. As I said, everything you need is linked in the video description, um, spare Bowden tube, uh, the link to Thingiverse for the little jig you're going to cut and the uh, retainer nut and all of that. So let's get started. All right, the first thing you're going to need is to download uh, Luke Hatfield's uh, models from Thingiverse. This is a cut jig and the uh, retainer nut that goes in to hold the cut tube in place. So the link is in the video description. Click that and download it and print it out. Now, in most hot ends, besides all metal ones, as I keep mentioning, uh, you have a PTFE liner tube on the inside, and this is held in place uh, by a Bowden tube coupler or a small uh, retainer nut. Um, this has nothing to do with whether your machine is Bowden tube fed or direct fed. What this liner does is 
uh, during the, in the heat transition area of the hot end, it keeps your filament uh, from heating up and softening and causing jams where it shouldn't. So um, what Creality has done is taken this separate PTFE liner out and uses the Bowden feed tube as a liner as well. It just allows the Bowden feed tube to feed all the way down to the back of the nozzle. Now this simplified construction for them, but as you know, it can create issues if you get a gap in there. What happens is that gap fills with molten plastic. That plastic is never truly fully melted. It's not a true liquid. It's just softened so it creates drag on the filament as it feeds and retracts. Um, when it tries to feed and doesn't feed fully, you get gaps and under extrusion in your print. When it can't retract, you get stringing. So anytime you get one of these gaps between the tube and the back of your nozzle, it's going to uh, decrease your print quality. Now, what this fix does is you're going to cut a piece of spare Bowden tube using the jig, insert that down into your hot end right up against the back of the nozzle. That's shown in yellow. Now, the blue piece is a small retainer piece, and that's going to go in the top, and that's going to hold this sleeve in place because the Bowden tube coupler is going to put pressure on this retainer. The retainer then puts pressure on the cut tube. Um, all you have to do is make sure your Bowden tube coupler is kept tight and that's going to keep your tube in place without any chance of it slipping and causing a gap. So it's a really neat, easy fix that basically makes your hot end more like ones by E3D and other manufacturers. Um, now, if your Bowden tube gets yanked out of the coupler or creates a gap, it's up in the cool area and it's not going to cause any problems for you at all as far as jams or hindering retractions. So to get started, you're going to need to print both the cut jig and the retainer piece as I've shown here. Once you've done that, you're going to use an X-Acto knife uh, and use a spare piece of tubing. I really don't like cutting my original tube up. You, you can if you don't have one. It's not going to be a big deal, but I like cutting with a spare piece and I do have spares linked in the video description for you to buy but don't push down and try to cut this in one cut you want to do a gentle rocking motion with your knife so it doesn't crush the end of the tube if your tube end gets crushed it's not going to work right so you want to do this slowly and gently now just to make sure before you get this all assembled that it's not crushed i use a spare piece of filament and just test it in both ends of the tube and make sure that the ends cut correctly and aren't going to hinder feeding of the filament. Now I've preheated my machine to 215 and I'm going to take off the fan shroud here. This hot end is very hot so watch out. It's 250 degree, 215 degrees and it will burn you. Once the fan shroud is off I'm going to use tweezers and remove the silicon sock that acts as an insulator for the hot end. Um, once that is off, use a wrench to hold your heater block in place while you unscrew your nozzle. Uh, if you haven't done so recently, this is an excellent opportunity just to throw a new nozzle on. They're cheap. They do wear out. Uh, filament is abrasive, and it will enlarge the nozzle opening, which throws the accuracy of your prints off. So uh, if you've got a spare nozzle, go ahead and throw that on. Now, next thing I'm going to do is take off the uh, PTFE coupler or Bowden tube coupler, I mean, take that off, uh, get that off the tube, and inspect the end of your tube. Mine is getting a little worn. It's got some uh, molten filament on it. So I'm just going to cut the little bit of the end off, about a quarter inch or so, and I'm using a tube cutter. This is li also linked in the video description. When you use a tube cutter, you don't cut all the way through it once. What you do is you just barely tighten it down to where the uh, blade is just slightly cutting into the tube, and once you get it there, you're going to rotate the tube cutter around 360 degrees. What this will do is just score the tube a little bit. Once you've made a rotation, you tighten the blade again. Every two or three rotations, you tighten that blade and re-rotate uh, the cutter. And eventually, the blade will cut all the way through. But what you've done is make a clean cut that has not crimped that tube in any way, which can hinder the filament from feeding cleanly. So just take your time with this. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is run a spare piece of PTFE tubing through the hot end to clean out any debris or any molten filament. Now this came through really nice and clean, so I only need to do it once. 
Once that is done, I'm going to put a new nozzle on. Now remember, this is heated to 215 degrees. It is very hot. So once again, you're going to hold the heater block in place with a wrench and screw your nozzle back on, You put your new nozzle on, and you're going to make sure it's tight. You're not going to do like you used to when you're using the Bowden tube uh, to act as the interior insert and loosen this a little bit. You're going to make sure it's tight at this stage. Once I've done that, I'm going to insert my sleeve into the hot end. Take a hex wrench that came with your printer. Make sure it's seated down fully against the back of that nozzle. Next up, we're going to put the retainer piece in. Again, use a hex wrench. Uh, push that down against the back of the sleeve that you just inserted. Once that is done, you're going to take your Bowden tube coupler and screw that in. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure it's tight so it doesn't loosen during the uh, machine printing because that's going to create vibrations and that can loosen something like this. But you don't want it so tight that it crushes the tube insert that you just put in. If you crush that tube, it's going to hinder the filament feeding and you're going to see stringing and poor print quality. So again, just get it slightly tight, but no, don't crank down on it to the point you're going to crush that tube. Uh, next up, you put the Bowden tube in the coupler, and then I use a zip tie to hold the coupler ring in place so it doesn't accidentally depress when I'm messing with the machine and allow that tube to loosen. There are also clips that you can get on Thingiverse and print and put on there, but I just like using zip ties. It's much easier for me. And you just click the excess off, and you're all set to go. Now, I have told the machine to cool down at this point. It is room temperature. I'm going to reinsert the silicon sock. That's why I'm not burning myself. Uh, it's no longer heated. Uh, next up, we're going to screw the uh, fan shroud back into place. Get that done. And then finally, I'm going to tell the machine to heat back up to 215 degrees. And I'm going to reinsert filament through the Bowden tube down into the nozzle and make sure it feeds cleanly. Um, if it doesn't, it means something inside is not aligned and you'll have to take that tube out and make sure everything's okay that uh, the most likely your retainer was not flush with the tube it's sitting, it's sitting at an angle which is causing an issue but there it goes filament is feeding cleanly so everything is in place and it's ready to print so that's all there is to it thank you for watching please click that subscribe button